<laughs> I suspect a lot of us are familiar with this plant. For Scythia, with its abundant yellow blossoms, among the first to greet the new spring. For Scythia grows large, bushy, and thick, and before it even sends out leaves, it greets the sky with thousands upon thousands of bright blossoms. A fairly large shrub, it typically grows between one and three meters tall and sports a hard gray-brown bark. The bark is deeply pocked and wrinkled, as if it had come from a much larger, older tree such as an oak, and it is thick and strong. Its branches tend to fork in groups of twos and threes, with the widest angles between the forks being at about 45 degrees. And the branches may fork and fork again and fork again, giving the shrub a very thick and bushy look in no time. Some species of Forsythia are particularly large and may reach as much as six meters tall. Its wood is neither brittle nor bendy. It will break without too much difficulty, but it takes a little work twisting and turning it. And if you were to cut away a segment of a branch, you would see that the branch grows in distinct layers, and the distinct layers of the interior are clearly visible. We have a thick, tough, and fairly rigid outer bark that protects the plant from various infections. And within we have a dark green cambium, the living portion of the shrub that carries nutrient. Beneath that we have a pale green sapwood that really stands out. It is moist and full of flowing water. And within that we have a creamy pale heartwood that is the underlying structure, or bones, of the shrub. This structure is common to all trees and shrubs. Long before you see leaves appear on the Forsythia bush, there will be flowers. In fact, by my experience, the flowers appear as much as two weeks before leaves. Thousands and thousands of blossoms have four distinct lobes and are yellow. They emerge from clusters of tight buds that are green but red at the tips where the buds will part to divide into the individual lobes of the flowers. And the buds are attached to each twig by tough, scaly extensions. As the flowers open, they generally orient downward, though some will orient upward. And if it rains, the rain will catch on the petals, pulling the flowers downward and protecting their reproductive parts. When the flowers first open, they are flattish and have pale orange stripes near the center. And if you approach the clusters and have a whiff, they will smell like honey and milk, though the fragrance is subtle. That bit of milk smell has probably given rise to the rumor that Forsythia produces lactose, though laboratory studies have never been able to confirm this. But if you take an individual flower and lay it out on the ground, you will see that the petals form an almost perfect X formation. This is characteristic in the identification of Forsythia the many other flowers also have this growth form. About two weeks after the emergence of the flowers, leaves will begin to emerge. Like the flowers, they will emerge in clusters of tight buds. Leaves are dark green with a simple central vein, semi lanceolate in form, and finely toothed. Adult leaves often have pale patches, as can be seen here, and are typically 3 to 4 centimeters long, though some varieties of Forsythia have leaves up to 10 centimeters long. Forsythia blossoms are edible treat them as a vegetable in soups, salads, and sandwiches. Its leaves, however, are toxic and must be avoided. They contain several glycoside toxins, 